My autopilot is dying. I need to talk to an expert. We're going to on this episode of In the Hangar. Hello and welcome to In The Hangar. We are at Air Venture and we're at the Flying Eyes booth. We're using our discount code at flyingeyesoptics.com, taking off all caps one word. We'll get you 10%. And I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Bailey Ward. Dan, we've got a really exciting guest here with us. We do. So Jamie Luster from Genesis. I didn't realize you guys were right around the corner from where we're at in the <laughs> North Texas area. Yes, we are. We're based in Mineral Wells, Texas. Mineral Wells, Texas. I actually uh, have done a lot of flying there. And um, so I've been I've been having autopilot issues. And so I wanted to talk to somebody. I'm, I'm shopping. Right. So, yes, you represent Genesis, but let's start talking about autopilots and as a whole, and then we'll talk about specific um, Genesis autopilots. Sure. So, for those, okay, Bailey, you, you have a 182, yep. and you didn't even know the name of your autopilot because you really haven't used it. It's, no, I have. It's oh, just have. ancient. It's just ancient. It doesn't have a logo on <laughs> no, that. No, it's, 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 it's an Aztec. I think it's a 50. Okay. Um, so, an Aztec 50, and Aztec is the Genesis line. That so, is correct. What does an autopilot exactly do? Walk me through even the mechanics. So there's a various uh, types of autopilot. You have everything from just a wing leveler, for example, or uh, just altitude control. And then you can add in uh, both pitch and roll that will hold uh, both lateral and um, uh, pitch as, as well. And then you've got a, a third axis for yaw. So it really depends on the usage. Depends on the mission that, that normally somebody flies. If it's $100 hamburgers you go fly to, you might not need something that's going to uh, to allow you to, to do an approach down to minimums. But if you're in hard IMC, you want that kind of co-pilot autopilot. Which is what I need. I, I'm flying hard IMC a lot, across country, all the time. And the old Cessna Navomatic 400B, the altitude doesn't work anymore. All I can get is heading and GPN. Or G G N S S. Yeah, yeah. What is that? I, I hit the mode. I understand it gives me tighter than if I were to just do the old. It'll it'll allow you to uh, sequence your waypoints, so you don't have to actually change your uh, your VOR or your GPS uh, to change the heading to continue on your flight path. It'll do that for you with GNS at roll steering. Okay, so that's what an autopilot does. I I need one. What's what are my choices for my two ten? And maybe even like my 182. And, and, and her her 50, it's working, right? And it is working. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I have had problems with runaway trim in the past, which was not fun. Oh, runaway but, trim. Yeah, I've actually yeah I've dealt with that probably two times. Which I mean, obviously disengage autopilot, no biggie. But still, it's scary initially. Right. With older equipment. Right. So you do want to get that checked out, obviously, and, and yeah. normally and an installation did. center can fix that for you. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you did. And. Now, should she get a new autopilot if, if her 50, or old 50 is working? It, it really depends. It's potentially so. I mean, I, I mostly tell people if your autopilot's working well, you don't really need one. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to increase your capabilities, then you might want to consider it. Uh, for example, we offer an upgrade program to our new digital 3100 autopilot, so you can still use your STEC servos. In the ah. 182, you're just replacing it with the control head, oh. and that okay. gives you functionality like envelope protection and and straighten level flight or straight, uh, straighten level button if you get into an unusual attitude. So there's just some additional safety features there with the 3100 that okay. you could upgrade to. That's actually good to know because I recently read up on it, but I didn't see like the correlation between like the older equipment and the new. Yeah, we use the same servos and everything. So, uh, in so fact, is it basically a, a plug and play? Although um, it's a different shape. It's a right. different shape, so it's not. The 3100 goes into the, the standard radio rack. Mm -hmm. Uh, whereas the the uh, system that you have is is more of a round dial yep. uh, autopilot. So, but we one of the nice things that we do as well is we bring back your old servos. We completely overhaul them, make sure oh. that they're up to snuff, and mm -hmm. then we get, provide you with a new one year warranty on those servos. Oh wow! And then the autopilot itself comes with a two year warranty. Okay, uh, thirty one hundred. Um, is that is that kind of like the flagship? Uh, autopilot that you guys are offering? That is the most recent one. So STEC has been designing and building autopilots for over 40 years. And in the past, they were always analog rate-based autopilots. Now we've come into the digital world and the 3100 is a digital attitude-based autopilot. So it's, it's just a, it handles a little bit better. Uh, and this is a loaded question, but how does the 3100 compare against the other competition 
the G word, <laughs> right? And some of those. How 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 does how does the thirty one hundred stand up against the six hundred or the five hundred? Sure. I mean, the technology is basically the same, so they're they're fairly comparable. Uh, in, okay. If truth be in told, capability. In capability, yes. Okay. However, the unique thing about uh, Genesis is because we've done autopilots for so long, uh, we have what's called an ODA, which gives us authority to sign off on our own STCs. So oh, wow. we're able to get STCs much quicker. So our portfolio of STCs for the autopilot is is pretty vast. Well, and that's great because one of the the issues that I've been searching to do my avionics upgrade for Lola, my 210, is there are very few STC autopilots that I can choose from. Right. It's driving me crazy. Yes. I mean, because I, I basically have the Garmin one, I have yours, and I think that's it. There might be one other, but. Um, I don't have a lot of choices. Right. No, there's there's not, and and it's it's difficult to get an autopilot STC. I mean, it's not like you can do an AML where you can put a lot of aircraft make and models on one STC. You have to get individual STCs for each make and model and test fly each configuration. So it's it's time consuming and it's investment, and that's probably why there's there's not many choices right. out there. Yeah, and and there's not a whole bunch of you know. It's not like it's a 172 or it's a Cirrus. There's right, just right. not enough demand for it, I guess, sure. for the 200 series Cessnas. Right. Yeah. So for pilots with older airplanes like this who are wanting to upgrade, what's your biggest suggestion? What's a piece of an equipment that you think is a go-to? It depends on what your configuration is. I mean, the nice thing about the Yestec Autopilot as well is that we interface to almost all third-party equipment. So we can interface with steam gauges, with Aspen displays, for example, with uh, the Garmin TXIs is another one. So, mm -hmm. and any, you know, AirRank 429 GPS. Uh, okay. So you want to make sure that you have your your standard avionics in there that will drive the autopilot, but that's a consideration because, yeah. So what you're saying is Genesis will play nice with all the others? Correct, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. There are so. some autopilots out there that require other certain equipment and will only interface to that. Right. So and you I, need to make sure, are you willing to to be locked into that configuration or, or you want to make a decision to buy an autopilot that will allow you to reconfigure at a later date? All right. As I'm shopping, I, I will ask the, the, the important question, cost. How does a 3100 compare to the... And I can't even remember, is it the 500 or 600? If I don't have a Garmin driving it, it's a... 500, right? No, the the GFC 500 has to have the G5. Okay, so okay. it's the, it's the, the yes. 600 that would yes. be. All right, so how does the 3100 compare to the Garmin 600? In we cost. Have, we have a flat price for each, uh, for the 3100 in all Part 23 aircraft. Uh, I don't believe Garmin does. I believe that we are slightly less than them, and certainly so on, on some makes and models. Okay, so slightly less than the Garmin. Yes. Um, I guess on autopilots, you don't have any subscription fees. That's all going to be nav. Right. Um, so there's no other hidden costs or anything like that. What about the installation cost? How is, does the cost to install a Genesis a 3100 versus what it would cost to install a Garmin 600? It depends on whether you're upgrading or not. Like I mentioned, if you utilize the Aztec uh, servos that are already installed, if you're upgrading, the, the cost is going to be significantly less. However, if but in it's my a case, new it's install, a Navomatic, right. you know, it's going to be about the same. It, it, the installation cost okay. is going to be about the same. We, same number of servos running the same number of because when I buy the autopilot, I'm not just buying the the box that goes into the radio rack. I got to buy all the servos. And correct. All that correct. And okay. we we provide everything that you need so all the brackets screws nuts bolts everything all of that is included my understanding with garmin is they don't provide the ins a lot of the oh, nuts wow. and bolts and ah. stuff so oh, that, that can sometimes be added on that's why you got to really pay attention to your quote that you're getting from your installation center okay okay well i would sounds like i, I really would like um the 3100 would fit um yaw dampening is do that I, something you that i need in my 210 we recommend it for twin engine aircrafts. For single engine, it, it's not as important, so it's it's really up to you and your preference. If you, if you have a lot of rudder movement normally, I would suggest yet. Yeah, yes, if not, you know, you may not need it. Okay. Right. So yep. for something like my 182, it's not right. really necessary. Correct. Right. The only time I've ever flown anything with a yaw dampener was a Cirrus. Okay. And all we did was just hit it I, shortly after takeoff was on the checklist, and so I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I don't think you would need it. I, I wouldn't don't, recommend I it. I don't use a ton of rudder trim. Right. So. But yeah, but I do have rudder trim on the 210. I don't think. Yeah, you do on the 182, right? Mm -mm. Rudder trim. No, mm -mm. so no rudder trim anyway. Um, okay. Well, this is this is really helped. 
answer some questions as I'm shopping to upgrade <laughs> Lola on the autopilot. Okay. Um, any other uh, things you would want to say that would uh, set the 3100? Or if there's... You've also got the 55X currently. What, what are the other products you have? So, we, yes, we do have the 55X as well. That is our, our flagship analog autopilot. Analog, okay. Yeah, okay. so it is an analog rate-based autopilot still, and it's SDC'd in a significant number of, of aircraft that the 3100 is not oh, uh, certified okay. in. So that's why we still manufacture that. It's still a oh. good tried-and-true autopilot. Uh, we'll fly an approach down to minimum, so you know it's it's a it's a good autopilot. And then we have the 3100, which is the digital attitude based. Does autopilot. the 55X have altitude preselect? It does, using a separate box. So okay. with that okay. one, you have to purchase a, a an actual separate box that provides the uh, barrel corrected altitude. Whereas with the 3100, when you interface to to a display like the Aspen, for example, the Aspen will provide that information to the 3100. So her old 50X mm -hmm. or 50. Um, if she upgraded to the 55, it would be a plug and play. No, because hers is a round dial, so it would still have to go in the radio rack. So it's it's not exactly a plug and play. I thought the 55X was a, okay. All right. Mm. This we used to have a system 30 that plugged into the turn coordinator. Okay. Okay. Position. All right. Good to know. All right. Well, Jamie, thank you so much for You're taking welcome. time to uh, I appreciate it. Sell me on the uh, yes. the aspects of the 3100. So and it's great to know that you guys are right around the corner. That's Absolutely. A, that's a, a big thing. So. I hope to see you flying a 3100 soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something about autopilots. And um, we want to thank our sponsors. We've got 67 Designs, 67D.com. Clemens Insurance really makes this happen. Jerry at Clemens. When I switched over to him, he just knew the right questions to fill out the forms and ended up with the same underwriter saving me like $1,100. And that's what a broker should be doing. So also Marshall Protective Services, MPSProtects.com, ZVision, the brightest landing and taxi lights out there, XCVision.com, and Colton Mortgage. Colton taking off. We'll see you guys next time. In the hangar.